Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're taking a look at something I think you'll find pretty interesting. It's all about lab-grown meat. Yeah, remember all that talk about lab-grown chicken showing up in restaurants? Well, it's really taking off. It is. Yeah. But today we're talking cultured pork. That's right. And the research we'll be talking about today comes from the American Chemical Society. They had an article titled, Lab-Grown Meat Hits New Heights. Cultured Pork is Here. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the title alone had me intrigued. It is a very catchy title, but what's even more interesting is how they're using sorghum to make this cultured meat. Sorghum? Like the grain? Exactly. What does that have to do with growing meat in a lab? Well, let's step back for a sec and talk about why cultured meat is such a big deal in the first place. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. I know there's all this talk about it being good for the environment and more ethical and all. Right. But I'd love to hear more about the specifics. Okay, so think about traditional meat production for a minute. It uses a ton of land and water and resources. And then there's the greenhouse gases, right? Exactly. Cultured meat has the potential to massively cut down on all that. So it's like a win for the planet. Yeah. And you're not raising animals in the traditional way either. So it really addresses a lot of the ethical concerns people have with things like factory farming. Okay. So you get the taste and nutrition of real meat without hurting the environment or animals. Yeah. But it's important to know that cultured meat is different from plant-based meat. Oh, yeah. They do kind of seem similar. So plant-based meat uses plant protein to try and mimic the taste and texture of real meat. But cultured meat uses actual animal cells grown in a lab. So it's not just a substitute. It's the real deal. It is. Same taste and nutrition. Wow. Okay. But how do they grow meat from cells? I'm picturing like a giant Petri dish filled with steaks or something. Well, it's not quite that simple. The key is something called a scaffold. It's like a structure that the cells can grow on and develop into the different types of tissue that make up meat. Ah, so like a framework. Yeah. But this is where things get a little tricky. A lot of the materials they've been using for these scaffolds, like wheat gluten or soy protein, have some big drawbacks. Drawbacks? Like what? Well, some of them are water-soluble, which means they just dissolve in water. So that just adds extra steps to the production process. I see. And then others, they contain gluten, which is a no-go for people who are sensitive to it yeah. or have celiac disease. Right, so that limits who can even eat it. Exactly. And that's where this new research with sorghum comes in. Okay, now I'm interested. How does sorghum solve these problems? Well, there's a protein in red sorghum grain called kefirin. And it has some really amazing properties that make it perfect for a meat scaffold. Wait, so you're telling me this common grain is the key to growing meat in a lab? Yeah. Okay, this is getting good. Tell me more of this kefirin. So first of all, it's naturally gluten-free, which opens it up to everyone. And get this. What? It's also water insoluble. So no more extra processing. That's a win-win. I can see why you said this research was a game changer. But how do you even make a scaffold out of this stuff? They got pretty creative. They use something you probably have in your own kitchen. Really? Yeah. What is it? Sugar cubes. Sugar cubes? No way! Huh? They soak the sugar cubes in a solution of caffeine, and the protein bonded to the crystals. Then they dissolve the sugar away, leaving behind this intricate scaffold made entirely of caffeine. So it's like they're using the sugar cube as a mold. Exactly. It's a really clever way yeah. to create the right structure for the meat to grow on. Wow, that's brilliant. And did it work? It did. What happened when they introduced the pork cells? They were able to grow pork cells on the caffrin scaffold. The cells attached to the structure and started differentiating into muscle and fat cells. Hold on, differentiating? Oh yeah, good question. Think of it like stem cells. Okay. They can become different types of cells. Right. So these pork cells are transforming into the different types of tissue mm -hmm. that make up the meat. Wow. So they're like building a piece of meat from scratch. Yeah. And that's not even the best part. There's more. Yeah. I'm on the edge of my seat. Okay. So remember how we talked about red sorghum? Yeah. Well, those pigments in the sorghum actually give the cultured pork a natural pork-like color. So it doesn't look all pale and weird. Exactly. Wow. So it's got the color right. But does it have all those good antioxidants that sorghum has too? Yeah, it looks like it. The kefirin seems to give those antioxidants to the meat along with the color. I'm speechless. So it's good for the environment. It's good for people with dietary restrictions. And it might even be healthier than regular pork. Right. That's incredible. But it's important to remember that this is still early research. Ah, so there's a catch. Kind of, yeah. What's the catch? Well, they cooked some of the cultured pork and the texture pretty much stayed the same. 
It needs to behave more like a real pork chop when it's cooked. Right. It needs to get all brown and crispy. Exactly. Okay. What else? Mm -hmm. They're still fine tuning the nutrition too. It's close to real pork, but there's still some differences. Interesting. So there's still work to be done, but the potential is definitely there. I can't wait to see where they go with this. Me too. And the potential impacts are huge. What if this works for other types of meat? What could that mean for global food production? Now, those are the big questions. Yeah. We've covered the basics, so let's dive even deeper in the next part of our deep dive. So this sorghum scaffold, it's amazing. But how long until we see this stuff, this Caffron cultured pork on our plates? That's the question everyone's asking. This research is super promising, but there's still a ways to go before it's ready for the market. What are the biggest challenges? Well, one is the texture. Remember how the article said the cooked and uncooked cultured pork looked pretty much the same? Yeah, definitely didn't look as good as a real pork chop. Right. So they need to make the texture more appealing. Okay. Both when it's raw and after it's cooked. Yeah. It has to have that nice bite that people expect from real meat. I get it. Texture is important. What about the nutrition? You said earlier that it was a little different from real pork. Yeah, so they found that the cultured pork had more protein and saturated fat than lean pork and less unsaturated fat. Hmm. So they need to adjust that. Yeah, they need to do more research and see how they can adjust the process, maybe get mm -hmm. closer to the nutrition of traditional pork or even make it healthier. Oh, so not just replicating meat, but making it better. Mm, exactly. Imagine if your pork chop was sustainable and D, super healthy. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But let's be realistic. Even if they can get the texture and the nutrition right, isn't this stuff going to be super expensive? Well, it's definitely expensive to make right now. That's why you're not seeing it in grocery stores. Yeah, it seems like something only rich people can afford. For now, yeah. But think about new technologies. Think about computers or cell phones. Okay. It used to be huge and expensive. Yeah. But as technology improved and they started making more of them, the prices went way down. So you're saying cultured meat could become more affordable over time? I think so, yeah. Especially if they could figure out how to scale up this kafir and process. And then everyone could afford it. <laughs> exactly. It could be a real alternative to traditional meat. Okay, so let's say, hypothetically, cultured meat is cheap and easy to get. What would that mean for the world? That's the big question. It could change everything. Like what? Well, we already talked about the environmental impact. Less land, less water, less greenhouse gases. Right. If people start eating cultured meat instead of traditional meat, it could be huge for the planet. Yeah, that's exciting. What about food security? Well, as the population grows, we're going to need more and more food and more protein. And raising more animals isn't sustainable. Right. Cultured meat could help us meet that demand in a way that's good for the planet. So it could help solve world hunger. It could definitely be part of the solution. But what about all the farmers, the people who make a living raising animals? That's a really important point. This transition has to be done responsibly. Yeah. We can't just forget about all the people who might be affected. It's a big decision. Okay, before we finish up, I want to talk about those red pigments in the sorghum again. Oh, yeah, the ones that give the meat its color and antioxidants. Right. Could those pigments be used for other kinds of meat? That's a great question. Mm. It's definitely possible if they can figure out how to use those pigments. We could have all kinds of colorful cultured meats. Imagine bright red steaks and chicken breasts. It would be like combining science and nature. And it would make cultured meat seem more natural. Yeah, some people are put off by the idea of lab-grown meat. Right. But if it looks and tastes like real meat, and it's got all those healthy antioxidants from plants, it might be more appealing. So it's not just about copying meat. It's about making it even better. That's what's so exciting about this research. I feel like I have a whole new perspective on food now. Me too. There's a lot to think about, but the possibilities are huge. Yeah. Okay. I think we've given our listener a lot to digest, but before we go, it's time for that thought-provoking question you mentioned. So here it is. What if cultured meat becomes totally normal? Like what if everyone is eating it? It could be in every grocery store. On every menu. What do you think, listener? Would you try cultured meat? What would it take for you to eat it regularly? That's something to think about as we all navigate the future of food. And who knows, maybe we'll come back to this topic in another deep dive and see how things have changed. I'd love to see where this all goes. It's going to be an interesting ride. Wow, that was a lot. So much to think about. It really is amazing. This tiny grain could change how we eat meat. It really could. Who knew? Sorghum. 
It's like bird seed, right? Right. And now it could help us create a whole new food system. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like science fiction or something. It really is like science fiction becoming reality. So for those of you listening, let's recap everything we've talked about in this deep dive. All about cultured pork and sorghum. Sounds good. What do you think the biggest takeaway is? I think this research shows us that we can make lab-grown meat that's good for the planet. Mm. A-N-E-D good for people. And not just some people, everyone. It really is a breakthrough. Yeah. Using kefirin protein from sorghum, they created a scaffold that's gluten-free. So anyone can eat it. Right. And it's water-insoluble, so it's easier to make. It's perfect. Yeah, it's all natural, too. No weird chemicals. Exactly. And then there's the color and the antioxidants. It's crazy. I know, right? It looks like real pork. It might even be healthier than real pork. It's like nature knew what it was doing. It really is remarkable. But even with all this progress, we can't forget that there's still work to do. Right. They still need to figure out the texture. And make sure the nutrition is right. Yeah, if it doesn't taste good, no one's going to eat it. Exactly. Yeah. But the progress they've made is huge. The future of food is looking pretty exciting. It really is. Okay, well, as we wrap up today's deep dive, we want to leave you with one last thing to think about. We've talked a lot about the science, but at the end of the day, the choice is up to each of us. As cultured meat becomes more available, will you try it? What will make you decide yes or no? These are big questions, and they're only going to become more important as time goes on. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time. See you next time.